think that's what's happening. I ought to try something different. Oil filter. I uh, ordered this from JP Cycles. Usually I was going to the Harley dealer to buy my oil filters, but I thought, you know what, I don't need to go to the dealer, especially in a time like this. So I ordered this online. Now this one's a little bit different because it has the little nut built into the top so you can put a you know, socket on there to spin it on and off. Uh, my old, the one that's on there now doesn't have that on there, so you know you really gotta try to get your hand on there and, and pull it off. So it's Twin Power is the name of it. It's just a generic brand, but uh, they said it fits the 1999 Harley Fat Boy. So I will do that. I've got the filter. I've got my oil, 20W50, and I've got, oh, maybe a half a quart of primary chain case lubricant to do the primary. I also got the funnel for the primary and a gasket for it too. So I'll be doing that, but I ordered some more oil, some primary oil. And that'll be coming as well. Once I get the rest of those fluids, I'll go ahead and change the, uh, the uh, oil in the primary and the engine. And we'll do a video on that. Look at this. This is condensation on here today. Just from sitting out here in the garage. I mean, it's wet. And it's warm in here. I... That's weird that it's so wet in here. It's 70 degrees inside. And the bike's got condensation on it. Even on this side, there's water on there. It's everywhere. I guess I should fire up the uh, torpedo heater and put a little heat on it and, uh, and dry that out. Good grief. I don't like moisture sitting on that thing like that. Anyway, today let's talk about what's the what's the hairiest condition you've ever got or situation you ever got yourself into on your motorcycle. No, I'm not talking about getting in a bar fight or something like that, but I mean you're on the road and next thing you know you're in almost over your head. I've got a couple stories I can share to get the thing started. And part of this is you know, sharing your stories. So this is kind of a, a group effort here where everybody gets on and they all add their two cents worth down in the comments below. So feel free to tell me your story. And, uh, you know, the neat thing about the comments is people actually comment on other people's comments and sometimes it starts quite a dialogue there. So uh, anyway, I got a couple situations. The first one that comes to mind though is when I was uh, in Sturgis. And I, could, I can't remember what year it was. It was quite, quite a few years back. And, and some of you guys that have been to Sturgis know what I'm talking about because you've probably been in this same situation. But I was on the bike and I was up on the needles and I was, I was riding the, 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 the Harley up there where you go you know, through the rock. And a real bad thunderstorm rolled in. Well, I remember taking shelters, probably in that tunnel or something. I don't remember exactly where I went, but got, I was able to be out of the rain and it started to hail. And the hail came down like the size of peas or marbles, you know, and it just, it just covered the road. And after the storm passed, the sun came back out, but the road, and that's a curvy, you know, you're on kind of a grade going up and down and, and turns. The road was covered with hailstones and you couldn't even ride on it. A couple of people tried to take off and they almost dumped their bikes because it was like driving on ice or on marbles. And I remember staying there for, and of course the sun came back out and, and the steam was coming off the road. The road surface was already warm. 
because the sun had been out prior to the storm coming in. And within 15 minutes, I think, all the hail had melted off the road and you could continue on without any trouble. But that was one of the craziest, you know, I had never seen anything like that before. And it was just like, oh, wow. Kind of a weird uh, situation that nature threw at me that, uh, lucky it was an easy one to deal with because the sun came out and took care of it. But another situation, I, it wasn't so easy. I was... I was in Utah and I was coming on a, I think it was probably like a state route or something. It wasn't a highway or anything like that. And as I traveled along this, this road, there was very, very light traffic. There wasn't hardly anybody on this road out in the middle of nowhere. And I was coming down off of this plateau. Now these plateaus, you know, you drive for miles along this flat ridge and then all of a sudden it just drops off. So the road kind of like, snakes back and forth with switchbacks till you get down to the bottom of the plateau. So I was coming down, I, I was coming across the top of this plateau and there was road construction signs. Well, they were doing road construction on the part that went down with the switchbacks. And in that they were doing some blasting. So they stopped me, the, the flagger stopped me and he said it's going to be a while, a half hour or so, because they're getting ready to blast, and once they get done with the blasting, then we'll let you go. So I just shut the bike off and set up camp there for about a half hour, maybe 40 minutes or so. And finally they said, all right, you're good to go. Well, I thought I was free sailing from there, but I was wrong, because the road was under construction, and they had been grading it, and putting down gravel and stuff so it was kind of a steep grade going down and it was all loose gravel now the worst part was when you came to the switchbacks where they just made this sharp u-turn to cut back down the other way that was like driving on marbles and i was you know i had a, a car or two behind me but when I came down to the switchback i had to almost come to a stop and, and as i was trying to turn around the switchback my front tire just wanted to keep sliding straight and I was almost clear over onto the oncoming lane just barely creeping along trying to get around that corner so I could keep going and I'll tell you what I was puckered up pretty good there and there was actually a couple of those before I got down off that plateau but I, I was I was very thankful that I didn't drop the bike it could have it could have been bad, uh, <laughs> but luckily I made it down off of there. But who I wouldn't want to do that again for anything. And lastly, the last situation that I can think of that I ever was in where things got real bad, <laughs> and some of you probably been in this situation before too. It's like this time of year, like March, and I was riding the bike to work every day. And it started out to be a nice sunny day, very pleasant uh, morning, probably in the 40s, something like that, 45 degrees or something. I just bundled up and, uh, and took the scooter to work. Well, I went through the eight hour work day and unfortunately at the end of the day, the weather started going sour. The temperature started to drop and it started to snow. Well, they said, well, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, Itchy? You, well, I gotta go home, you know, I don't have any other transportation at the time. I, I didn't have a choice. So I got on the bike and I started heading home. I probably had about, uh, oh, 12 miles to go, I think. And most of it was like, I wouldn't call it city riding, but it wasn't rural riding either. It was, you know, like, like in town kind of stuff. The roads were completely covered with snow and all the best I could do was just to kind of stay in the lane of the the tire track of the car in front of me and you know just kind of keep it straight and even keel. <laughs> I made it I made it home all right without dropping the bike, but uh, when I got home, the whole front of me, I probably had about an inch of snow caked against my chest and all over my 
my hat. <laughs> it was it was pretty crazy. I was just thankful to get home that day. Those are the three worst conditions I think I've ever had to ride in, personally. Of course, everybody's gotten stuck in a thunderstorm before where it's raining so hard you can't even see hardly in front of you. And looking through eyeglasses, goggles, or a windshield with no windshield wiper makes it 10 times worse. It's a very dangerous situation. A lot of guys won't even ride like that. They'll pull off and wait till the storm passes. I'm interested to hear your stories, leave them in the comments below. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up, hit the like button, and tell your friends about us. And we will keep you posted with more videos coming up here twice a week. Well, that's all I got for today, guys. Until next time, take care of yourselves, be safe, be healthy. Catch you later.